Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vineyardchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Now here's this week's message. It's a story that would go on to change the world, but it happened so long ago that we forget. You know, the same way you can forget what you got last Christmas. And yet here we are, the same thing year after year. We decorate, we rush, we shop, we wrap, we open, we invite, we attend, we eat, we celebrate, we box it all up, wait 12 months, and we do it again. But there's more to the story, more than a tree, more than gifts, and more than just another holiday. And we all want there to be more to this season. The thing is, God knew that. In fact, that was his plan all along. He wants us to have more, more joy, more peace, more of Him. He gave us the perfect gift, and it wasn't wrapped neatly under a tree. The gift He gave wasn't a virgin mother or wise men. It wasn't angels, a star, or a manger. The gift He gave was and is the person of Jesus, fully God but completely human. The gift was that He clothed Himself in humanity and embarked on a rescue mission one that would give hope to all mankind. And the story that would change the world forever began like this. Well, Merry Christmas. Good to see you. I am back. Um, so if, you're, if you've only been coming for two or three months, you might wonder who I am. I, uh, I'm one of the pastors here. I got injured wakeboarding uh, back in uh, August and I had reconstructive knee surgery. So it's, I've been in recovery, been in co convalescing, and I kind of put it as my target, you know, Christmas Eve. I'd love to come back and be part of the Christmas Eve service. I love what God does on Christmas Eve. And so good to have you. I'm so glad to have you. Great, great to have the kids here. Again, if the kids get rambunctious, we do have a, a kids ministry uh, that's going on. It's amazing. And uh, they can go out at any time. Uh, what we're talking, we are in a series, as you saw from the bumper, on uh, gift giving and giving uh, gifts of love is what we're talking about today. Gifts, gift giving is what Christmas is mostly about, right? It seems like that's, I mean, it's all about getting the right gift, sp spending the right amount of money, and, and uh, gift giving's all, the, everybody's focused on that this, this time of year. But you know, the very first Christmas, there was a great gift that was given, and it was a gift of love. It was God's gift of love which was Jesus Christ. A gift of love is an amazing thing. You know, sometimes gifts of love can, the, the love can like transcend the gift itself. Sometimes a gift may have like no intrinsic value. Let me give you an example. A number of years ago when my, my kids, they're all close together, three boys. One of them, he was about four years old and he used to love to go in my backyard and play with, uh, build things, you know, play with sticks and all the rocks and whatever they do at four. You know. And for Christmas, he collected his best sticks and gave those to me for Christmas. I opened it up and it was sticks, you know. At first it kind of caught me off guard, sticks. And then, I, then it dawned on me, oh, these are his sticks. The ones that he loves to play with. The ones that he builds things with. I still remember that. It's one of my best gifts I've ever gotten. And you say, how can sticks be? Andy, you must have a pretty rough life. Sticks are the best gift you ever had. It was a gift of love. See, love transforms a gift. God sent a gift of love. And it was on Christmas, the very first Christmas, 2,000 years ago. And it was Jesus Christ. And Christ changes things. Now, I want to tell you three things that Christmas does to, uh, really, three things about Christmas that gives meaning to, to life today. Number one is that when we think of Christmas, God, it's, it's God sending his son to earth. In other words, God came to earth. He came to us earthlings, said, hello, I, I have a message for you, a message of love, a message to tell you that you matter to him. That's really what Christmas is, that you matter to him. And it reverberated throughout the world. I mean, it's just over the, over the years. Now, just a few weeks ago, December 7th, we celebrated, uh, kind of recognized the, uh, the, the 
start of the World War II for us, Pearl Harbor, 75 years has gone by. And then four years later, the Allies, uh, you know, won the, won the war. And, we, we, and that, that affected a lot of people. But what happened 2,000 years ago on Christmas affected the whole world. John Glenn, the, just the day after December 8th, everybody was recognizing because he had died and it was, he died at 95 years old. And he was, he, he, everybody talked about him because he, he when he uh, circled the, the earth three times in outer space, first guy to ever do that. All the Americans were going, wow, this is, look at this. And, but when God sent his son, Jesus Christ, it was bigger than that. It was bigger than any event that we can think of. Now, I want to show you this verse. Notice on your outline or on the side screens, talking about Mary, she will give birth to a son, that's Jesus, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to his son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so here is this great message of God coming to be with us. Now, if you think about it, if, if you were God, how would you come? If you're going to visit your people, your creation, Certainly, I mean, I don't think most of us would come like, God, like Jesus came, you know, to be born in a backwoods town nobody had ever heard of. I mean, we know about Nazareth now, but it was, back then it was like nobody had heard of it. And so Jesus, he, you know, here God comes. I mean, most of us, I know for me, if I was, if I was God and I was coming, I would want, I'd want everybody, people to know, you know. I mean, I'd come probably on during the, the halftime of the Super Bowl. You know, and I'd want more than Lady Gaga there, man. I'd want, I'd want some, some big stuff going on and get all the world leaders to line up on the 50-yard line. They would give me great gifts worth lots of money. I mean, that's, that's kind of the way we think. God comes as a baby, as a little baby, so that we can, you know, why would he do that? Because we can relate to a baby. And, and the story of Christmas is a story of God coming in, as a, in a disguise, in a way that we would never think of it. Now, sometimes when we are asked to recount the story of Christmas, you know, there's so many elements, so many pieces, and it's all about God coming in this humbled way. We don't always get it right. There were some kids that were asked that question. What's the message of Christmas? And so they interviewed them, and here's what they said. Tell me, as you're watching this video, it's not that long, but when you're watching it, see if you can figure out what is accurate and what, where they kind of missed a little bit. Okay, watch this with me. What's up, everybody? What's up? Hi, how are you? Good. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> What's so funny? It just made me laugh. All right, so we're going to talk about the Christmas story. Take me to the beginning of the Christmas story. The angel appeared to Marianne and said, you are the most needed and God dearly, dearly, uh, I don't know how to say, loves you and um, he, and you're going to have a baby. How am I I'm supposed to know because I'm not even married yet. Joseph, he had a white beard, white hair. He was wearing gray clothes. So he looked like Gandalf. <laughs> And what did Mary look like? She had like a dress on, but it was white, and like a little cape over her, her head. And then Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem on the donkey. Uh, how long do you think it took? Maybe about five days. That sounds about right. Then the donkey went to Bethlehem. They wanted to find a pl an inn. There's a place called Inns. All the inns were all too full. They were just like kind of disappointed. One man said, you can go to my stable where all my animals are. And they went on to the barn that they told them about. There was a cat in the barn. There was some nice sheep. <laughs> Elephants, donkeys, cows, chickens. <laughs> Like a doctor, the, so Mary can get the baby out. Mm -hmm. The baby was born, and all the animals gave us joy. And, and then 
The cat made them a bed. They um, used the manager where animals eat out of. They put um, baby Jesus into the manager. No, 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 it was a manger. Some shepherds in the field. I think they were babysitting sheep. One angel up here said that your state savior has been born in a stable in Bethlehem. And all suddenly, um, a whole army of angels um, appeared to them singing, respect God in all of his way, your ways, I think. And then, um, and they say, give praise. There's a baby. There was three kings. They followed a star. I think it was God. Then they saw a stable. They went in it. They said, we should probably give them presents. And what gifts did they give him? Maybe milk. Christmas tree. A turkey and a snowman. They gave big, they gave big joy. I had a great day, and that's the end of the story. And that is the greatest story ever told. How do you think you did? Nailed it. <laughs> it's a great story, greatest story ever told. But you know, even with all of the slight errances, you know, a snowman in the desert and different things like that, the main message still comes through. It is the message of God sending his son, Jesus Christ. And he came as a baby. He came as a baby because he didn't want to scare us. He wanted to save us. And we can relate to a baby. And he grew up just like us. And he had all this, Jesus had all the same struggles we have, all the same temp temptations, all the same desires and drives, hang-ups, the challenges we have. The, it's just, life is is incredibly challenging, and Jesus experienced that. So we can relate to him. We can relate to him, and he relates to us. It's part of the, the message of Christmas. Now, Christmas is part of that as well. I mean, Christmas is a lot of fun, especially seeing it through kids' eyes. Christmas can be amazing. But, you know, if you had a hard year, Christmas, Christmas may not be that, that great of an experience. This, that's why some people call Christmas the sh pencil sharpener of the emotions. In other words, if you had a great year, you're having a, you know, everything's going well, then Christmas just kind of highlights that. And you're super excited and everything's great. But if you had a difficult year, you know, you had challenges relationally or financially or uh, your health has fallen out on you or you had the loss of a loved one, all kinds of things can happen. All of a sudden you hit Christmas and it doesn't feel so good. And that's part of Christmas too. But you know, Jesus Christ came so he can relate to us. He wants to say, he, he cares for you and he understands your situation. And God intervenes, not just passively, but he's active in our lives. You know, the truth is we're as close to God as we want to be. God goes out of his way to reach out to us. And it's up to us to kind of take an initiative and reach back. Say, God, I want you to be in my life. I want you to be part of that. And there's no better time than Christmas to do that. Notice in Philippians, he says, Jesus Christ, who though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself even further, going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on a cross. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him the name which is above every name. You see, the truth is, is God emptied himself through, through Christ, and he, and, and he came to, to earth. I mean, he left heaven. Heaven's, an, hell, heaven's a solid place. I mean, I, I don't even like checking out of a nice hotel. You know, I'm thinking, oh, I like this hotel. Can you imagine checking out of heaven to go to earth and then live the kind of life that he did? He did that because he went to extraordinary efforts to say, I care about you. So Christmas... The message is that God came to earth. Number two is Jesus came to show what God is like because we, we wouldn't really necessarily know. We can learn some things about God, like through nature. You look at nature, you look at the universe, you can see, well, certainly God is powerful. God loves variety. He loves beauty. You look around, you look at all the animals, all the variety, all people, the variety of people. God is very organized. You look at the organization of the way things are intricately put together. But there's some things we just can't 
understand about God through nature alone. We don't know that God is loving, that God wants, offers us peace, that there's forgiveness through Christ. All these things, they come when we discover who Jesus is and we have an encounter with him. Luke 2 says, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with an angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so nature doesn't tell us that God is loving, but we see that in Christ. Nature doesn't tell us that God offers peace, but we see that in Christ. There's a lot of things we discover through Christ that we wouldn't necessarily see. And we discover that God is loving. God is loving. Now, how do you know if somebody loves you? Right? I mean, that's maybe some of you gals. Maybe, maybe a guy told you, I love you. And you came to discover that his version of love was not yours. Right? I mean, because love, what does love look like? It's certainly more than just words. And it's certainly more than just living for yourself and just wanting your own desires met. A big part of love is action. It's giving of yourself, caring for somebody else, protecting other people, providing for other people, living, you know, financially sacrificing to help somebody who's in need. Parents love their kids when their kids are sick in the middle of the night and they go without sleep. I mean, those are all things that we would say, yeah, that's loving. And we see that. And God says he's loving and he demonstrated that by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to come live among us, relate to us, and then die on the cross because there was atonement that was needed. There was this distance between us and God, and, and God needed to satisfy that. And he did that through Christ. And so when we put our faith in Christ, that's when our, whatever we've done in our life is satisfied on the cross. He died for us. That's the message of the cross. He, he, Jesus didn't come just to stay in the crib. He went from the crib to the cross. And we learn also that God is a redeeming God. God redeems us. We learn that through Christ. Now, you, you may not know what redemption means. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Let me give you an example. Redemption is when you take something that is, has no value anymore, or ever did, and you make it and you give it value. Now, as I said, I tore my ACL. Tore, actually, I tore my knee pretty bad. I tore, I tore up the meniscus real bad. The kneecap was all torn up. He had to repair that. It was a big surgery. And every surgery is different. You know, when you wear a brace like that, every, everybody, a lot of people come up and they have a story, right? Hey, I tore up my knee, and, and, and I believe them, but, you know, everybody's situation is a little different. In my situation, I talked to the surgeon, got a couple of opinions, and they said, well, you're going to need a, another ligament. That's your ACL. And it's gonna, it's, he, they said it really needs to come from a cadaver, from a dead person. Right? They don't need it anymore, Right? Normally, they find somebody about your age, same gender. They're looking, they're, they want to, and, and usually they don't take a ligament. They take like a tendon, and then they try to make it, you know, work like a, a ligament. And that's part of the, part of the long recovery because my body's saying, hmm, there used to be a ligament there. That's a tendon. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. And it takes a while for them to say, okay, I'll make this work. And the morning of the surgery, I'm being prepped for surgery. Sharon comes in. She goes, hey, I just saw them come with the container. It said live organ. That was your, your part. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, you know, I don't know. For both of us, we didn't really think of a tendon as being a live organ, but it's live tissue. It's transported the same way. It's cared for the same way. And when you, if you uh, mark a, on your driver's license, organ donor, like I did, they take it all. I mean, you know, they just, it's not just organs. I mean, they're, they're, they're taking they're, anything that's usable, they're taking. And so they, they put this other person's tendon where my ligament was. When I was about to do that, a few weeks before, I talked to some people and told them what I was doing. I had, a, I had a, some people say, don't do that. I said, well, why? They said, you don't know anything about that other person. What if, what, if they're, what if they were a different religion? Then they would name a religion. You know, what if, what if they were a bad person? What if they were demonized, somebody said. You know, I'm thinking, do you think a demon's going to come in to me from a, some dead person's tendon? <laughs> That's kind of what was being applied. But here's the thing. First thing, that, that is not the way it works. 
Now, if you, if, you know, you might be thinking, well, yeah, I can figure that out just from science. But no, but from, from, the, from faith. Listen, the whole idea of redemption is that God takes something that's of no value and brings value to it. And that, that person, that, there's no more value for their tendon. And when that was put in my, my leg, which I'm thankful for, I'm, that all of a sudden now there's value for years, maybe decades, I'll be able to use this knee and, and, and be able to use it for God's glory because I want to live my life for the Lord. You see, when we live our lives for ourselves, we're kind of like that dead tendon. It's just all about me. Then we miss what God had put us on earth for. You see, every single person here, myself included, God has a purpose for you. You're not an accident. No matter what the circumstances of your birth are, no matter what your parents told you, you're not an accident. God has a purpose for you. And he wants you to figure that out. He wants you to, to, to discover that and start to use your life for God. It, it'll look different for everybody here because we're all unique. But we live for God. And when we do that, that's what redemption is about. God redeems our life. He says, and no matter how old you are, I've talked to people that were on their deathbed and they say, I want to I put my trust in God. Now, certainly God doesn't want you to wait that long. But no matter where you are in your life, when you decide, I want to put my faith in Christ, he starts that redemption. He takes, okay, well, on your own, you know, you lived your life. And really, it didn't amount to a whole lot. But with Christ, he redeems it, and it starts to get, have all new kinds of purpose, all new meaning. That's what we're going to be talking about in January, brand new. What happens when God redeems a person? And start looking at what a brand new life looks like in Christ. And so I encourage you to come and be part of that. You know, a lot of people, they, don't, they only come to church once a month, maybe twice a month. Some people even less than that. I encourage you to step out of that and say, you know what? I want more out of my life. I want God part of my life. And, and, and just say, you know what? For the next five weeks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start coming to church. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what brand new is about. And be part of that and see what God does in your life. So Christmas is about God coming to earth. Christmas is us understanding what God is like. Then thirdly, Christmas means that we can know God in a personal, life-changing way. Maybe you've heard that statement where it says, Jesus is the reason for the season. You know, maybe on a Christmas card or a bumper sticker, and that's true. Jesus is the reason for the season. It's not Santa. It's our Savior. It's not jingle bells. It's Jesus. But here's a, bit, a deeper meaning than that. Even though Jesus is the reason for the season, the, here's the, the deeper meaning. You are the reason for the season. Jesus came for you. He came for us. It's not just for himself. He came to connect to us so that we could relate to him, so that we could have a personal life-changing experience with him. That happened for me when I was 18 years old. Somebody told me a, the same thing I'm talking to you about. I thought, you know what? I want to put my faith in Christ. I prayed to ask Christ into my life, and I started a new path. It didn't happen overnight, but all of a sudden, God started changing me, redeeming me, loving on me, helping me to release people who I was, didn't, I wasn't even aware of the stuff, that, the bondage that I was having. I had generational sin in my life, things that had been passed down, all these things God wants to address in our lives. He wants to have a personal, life-changing relationship with you. You can have that. Luke 2 says, today in the town of David, a Savior, circle that, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. You see, God would not have taken all of the effort, all of the time to send us a Savior if we didn't need one. He knew we needed that. He knew we needed a Redeemer. We needed somebody to love us, somebody to guide us, show us the way somebody that we can relate to, somebody who we can discover real truth, not just what we come up with in our own mind, but the truth that God says, this is truth. This is the moral compass. This is a compass, a spiritual compass for you. That's what Christmas is about. Putting God first in our life and saying, I want that personal relationship. Okay, let's bow our heads and we'll, we'll pray. Father, I, I just pray right now for I know that you stir on the human heart in different ways. Some of you, 
You've, you're here, and God's saying, it's time for you to open up the most important gift of all, which is Jesus Christ. You see, a gift that un, goes unopened has no value. And so how many Christmases are you going to go where you don't open up the gift that God's given you? Today, why not do it? Just say, Jesus Christ, I come into my life. Thank you for showing me the way. If you've never asked for forgiveness, say, God, I want your forgiveness in my life. I want your forgiveness. Love me. Help me to be lovable and to be able to love others as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I mentioned to you that we have the, uh, uh, the series brand new. I want to show you just a quick uh, uh, excerpt of some of the stuff we're going to be talking about and brand new, and then we will sing uh, Silent Night together. Okay, watch this. Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. And we'll see you next week.